Yeah, uh, sure. The the next session will be hosted by a, a duo, actually, Davudu Idrisu and uh, Kati Frans. And uh, they are both uh, software developers, um, but a lot more than just software developers, right? They uh, are also Auth0 ambassadors, um, Udemy trainers, uh, uh, CTOs of companies, uh, all that. They're really down with the community. So really, we are really glad uh, to have them. And um, well, their, their session is going to be about migrating uh, Mern stack into Azure with the best practices. And um, yeah, Mern is uh, obviously it's, it's, it's Mongo, it's some uh, Java uh, Express React node. They will teach you all about it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm myself, I'm really interested in how, uh, how that should be moved uh, properly into Azure. So, um yeah hopefully we can bring them in soon and uh and learn all about it yep i really i you know when i was looking at uh, kati's um uh, profile or i was like googling him for a little bit mm -hmm. i'd never heard of him and then if you see what he has done in the past years it's unbelievable so yeah has, for sure he has up to, I think it's like 150 hours of training material on Udemy. Uh, 65,000 people have already uh, followed his lessons. Um, he's a, a, a maintainer of this open source headless CMS Tensei.js, which I would like to ask him a question about. And I think that would, the last time we saw him uh, here on the stream. Hi, there you are. Hey. hey, how are you? Um, yeah, I'm just getting um, Katy connected in a few minutes. Um, hey, Katy. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Thank you, guys, Thank so you. much for coming. Yeah, um, so apparently I and Katy happen to um, be in Nigeria currently. I left Ghana um, today. An impromptu meeting came up, so I was just rushing up to get to my hotel connect to the Wi-Fi and be able to attend the meeting. I know um, I and Katy could not really, you know, get into conversations all through me being in the flight. Uh, yeah, but I mean, we've been doing this for many times, so I believe you are going to take it away. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we've, hey, we've already done the, intro the introduction. Um, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Um, so I think I'm just... Uh, yeah, so this conversation for like four years now, um, I got to know. I think the Wi-Fi in the hotel is lagging a little bit. So, Kati. Um... Kati. Twin. 2016 and when we met we were thinking about you know building project together yeah i think that was the wi-fi <laughs> there's a cable coming i think yep Kati, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. So I think we are set up. Thank ah, you. great. Awesome. The wood is plugging in. Yeah, plug in. It's okay. So um, let me. Can you hear me too? Yes, yeah. we can. Is the network better now? Yeah, much better. Awesome. Yeah, you were breaking up um, a lot, but it's it's. I think it's good. Yeah, and I just received um, a password from the guest house that could allow me to log in with DS, which should be better. So I'm just going to um, pass it over to Kati right now um, so that we take it from the session. Um, so I was, you know, when we're preparing for the session, I was talking to Kati that I, I think this should be more of um, information session. And then we we'll 
we might just think of jumping straight into the app. Um, but if we don't give it a careful thought, then we will be missing some things, right? So, um, hey, Katy. Um, I mean, you've been building stuff for a while and you are an open source, you know, maintainer and you've been doing amazing stuff. You've inspired all of us and um, it's just amazing doing this with you today. Um, maybe you should go ahead. Well, he, he, he broke up again, but I think he meant to say that uh, you should go ahead and introduce yourself. Then probably. introduce yeah. yourself to the audience. <laughs> Yes, sure. So my name is um, Franz. I'm super, super grateful and honored to be here. I'm very happy to, you know, talk about my experience. Um, so in the past um, four, five, six months or so, um, Dawood and I have been collaborating on a couple of projects that we've deployed to, um, we've deployed to Azure together. So that's where this um, idea came up. We could share about experience, the different challenges that we had talk about the best practices, why you would want to use certain Azure services for some certain problems that you encounter while deploying your applications. So that's where we got this idea. And uh, I would be very glad to share my ideas and experience with you guys today. Um, so, Awesome. And we're really glad to have you here, a Udemy uh, pro, right? A famous Udemy uh, contributor. So this is bound to be good. So um, yeah. Um, by all means, uh, go ahead and take it away. Okay. Um, is do we have that wood? Okay. So um, the application we have is a full stack application, and we kind of decided to choose an application that has all the different services that you might need in you know a real world project that you are working on. Um, the application we have is an application built with React on the client side, and it's built with Node.js on the back end. It uses MongoDB for data storage, and it also has an additional layer of Redis for caching and also for some faster operations like vote counts and things like that. Um, so we are going to kind of show how we would do that on Azure, um, kind of show some little pitfalls that you might have if you are deploying this. Uh, on your own from scratch, and um, also some best practices or recommended practices that we would use if doing that from scratch. Um, so that would, where are you? Should probably share his screen. Okay, so while waiting for Dawood to pop in, we're just going to talk about the first service that we would want to um, deploy, which is our database layer, and that's MongoDB in this case. So when you're deploying a database into production, what are the things that you are concerned about? What are the things that you want to make sure that your application has or your database has before you push it to production? So the first thing you have to think about is um, availability for your database and scalability. So first, availability, you want to make sure that your your database has the least amount of downtimes as possible. So no matter the amount of traffic coming to your application, your database should be able to handle it and not go down on you because that would be a really poor user experience. Second thing you want to take into consideration is scalability. Is it possible for your application to scale when there is high traffic uh, maybe you are growing really fast, much faster than expected. How easy is it going to be to scale your database from one tier to a second tier? Very important thing you have to take into consideration. And that's when uh, Cosmos DB actually fits perfectly because all of these things are out of the, they come out of the box for you. You don't even have to worry about them. And you have 99.99% um, guarantee of availability and throughput for your application. And you're also sure that no matter how fast the traffic grows, your database communication would have very low latency. You also want to think about backups. And these are actually things that I've encountered every time I'm building applications. And it's been, it's been challenging. So let's say you want to spin up a droplet by yourself and actually 
um, install your own database instance and uh, set up automatic backups is really challenging. But with Cosmos DB, once you can just click a few buttons, you have your automatic backups already set up to six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, seven days, depending on the needs of your business and depending on you know how much data you actually want to store. So Cosmos DB figures out all of this for you. And you also want to make sure that the, the pricing model for the database that you are choosing also fits with the business that you are running. So you should be able to estimate and have a flexible pricing model so that as the needs of your applications change, then the pricing model just fits into that scenario. So all of these are advantages of why you would want to use Cosmos DB. So that's the first service that I think would be really great when you're considering using an application that is backed by a MongoDB backend. That's Cosmos DB. Um, I don't know if that wood is available. He should be able to share with us some ideas about deploying a Cosmos DB instance. I think I think that wood is running through the hotel trying to find a decent connection to join the stream again. <laughs> Was he supposed okay. to share his to share his screen? Yes, he's supposed to show us, you know, an, a database that we deployed for the sample application. Okay, so you so you were talking about Cosmos DB. That was the choice you you made at least for this demo, right? Yes. Um, so, how does this demo application? Um, uh, uh, how do I say this? Justify the cost of Cosmos DB? If I'm not being blunt. Um, I'm sorry, can you come again? So as, as far as I'm uh, aware, Cosmos DE is a pretty uh, a costly solution, right? Yes. Uh, so maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but so this, uh, this application, does it actually, um, uh, does Cosmos DE serve it better than any other database solutions? Or is this uh, something you chose just for this demo? Um, actually, if uh, if I am going into production with an application, Cosmos DB is a very good choice, and I'll explain why. Now, when you're choosing who should, whether you should self-host your database or which service you should use for your database, the cost is very important, obviously. But you also have to think about the cost of your future engineering team. For example, if you are going to choose a database solution that is just hosted with no backups, then you have to spend engineering time, which is also money, on engineering, on creating a backup solution. You probably also have to spend some time in setting up multi-region support for your database to be automatically available in different regions, depending on where your users are located. So all of these coming out of the box is a no-brainer for me to choose. Now, this also depends on the application, obviously. The application that Wood and I were working on was FinTech, and the amount of reads and writes to the database was is very important. Also, the security of the data was very important. So that's why we choose more, uh, Cosmos DB for that application. That's why I would choose Cosmos DB for any application that has critical data, because the payments that you make actually cover a whole range of things and not just the database story or storage or database access. That's a comprehensive answer <laughs> you just gave me. <laughs> uh, so I have another question. Um, I think you are, I think we can say you're one of the, the JavaScript guys, right? You are you. Uh, one of the main contributors to Tensei.js. Um, Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yes, I'm one of the main contributors. So um, could you tell us a little bit about what it is? Yeah, sure. So Tensei is my solution to building backend applications. I think um, in the past few years, as a front end engineer, you would realize that there are many of these services popping up to completely um, eradicate the the jobs of backend engineers. We have Hashura, which is amazing for generating a GraphQL API. We have Firebase, which has like an automatic backend and authentication for you. We also have um, um, uh, many services releasing functions. We have um, serverless functions on Amazon, serverless functions on um, Azure. 
So many of these services are kind of setting up a backend, um, but there are advantages and disadvantages. So Tensei tries to, you know, be the person in the middle that gives you 100% full control of your backend, but still gives you amazing superpowers to go as fast as possible. For example, with just a few lines of code, you can define, create, read, update, and delete for, you know, anything that you can think about. So you can also add authentication with literally just one line of code. You just put a plugin and then you have authentication authorization. You can choose between JWT authentication, um, session-based authentication, um, refresh tokens, access tokens, um, and two-factor authentication, email validation. We just add in a single plugin and if your application does not need it, you just remove it. So all of this gives you like a lot of flexibility on being able to create your own applications. It comes with uh, an optional content management system. If you build your applications and you want to manage your data, very option, you can just pull it out if you don't need it or put it in if you do. So we are kind of very particular about writing as minimal code as possible when you want to build your application so you can go as fast as possible. But in future, as your company grows, then you can scale with that. You can just, you know, open up Tensei. And that's the beauty because Tensei is just an express application and you can just break it up in future if your company begins to grow exponentially. So basically Tensei is going to give you a GraphQL API or a REST API, again, your choice so that you don't have to in install things you don't need. GraphQL or REST, authentication and authorization with JWT or cookies, your choice, um, two-factor authentication if you need it, email validation if you need it, a full-blown CMS for managing your data if you need it, tons and tons of other really amazing stuff coming. But that's basically what um, Tensei is. So then if it's built on top of Express, right? Yes. So for all of these features, are you plugging into Express modules or are you writing those yourself? Um, so for example, if you want to use course, you can just use the existing Express module. But for authentication, we write ourselves so that we can have full control on how exactly it works. So the CMS, for example, it's a plugin. You plug it into your Tensei application. It just gives you your CMS because you can read your application, know the resources. Maybe if you're building a blog, you will have post categories and things like that. So it just generates your CMS for you once you plug it in. And about your question, um, Yes, it registers express routes behind the scenes and handlers and middleware. But at the end of the day, you don't even have to think about that. It just it just works. And it's written custom so that we can have more control. I mean, um, this this is really awesome. Um, I know my network is struggling again. I was trying not to talk in the middle of, you know, Kati's presentation because I knew my network is going to struggle. Um, yeah, but we really had like awesome content here, but, um, are you able to hear me clear though? Cause I'm the only person who seems to be hearing myself breaking so much here. No, we can hear you perfectly. No problems. So wow. if you guys want to try to pick up your session from here, it's totally fine. Yeah. Um, I think it's fine. I'll turn off my video, um, just so that I, cause I feel my network is really bad, which means my video might, you know, let it really not go well. So yeah. I'll turn off my video so I can just uh, manage with the network I have here. Yeah, sure. That would do you. Are you able to share your screen and just show us around Cosmos DB, kind of the configurations that you need to set up, the reasons why you would probably choose certain configurations over the other, and the advantages that these have for a business? Absolutely. Um, so I'm just going to um, share my screen quickly just to show that. Um, please confirm if you can see my screen. Um, not yet. Okay. All right. I think it should be up in just a few seconds. Okay. Yeah. So um, like Kathy mentioned earlier on, we've been um having conversation about an app we are building behind the scene and then we kind of you know put so much thinking into it 
Um, so we started with a question when Cathy asked me that, hey, that would, um, what exactly, uh, how are you going to deploy this application? And I was like, okay, Cathy, I think this is a great question you asked. Um, and I was just about to say that, oh, you know, Azure has infrastructure as service. So I'm just going to create, you know, a, a server. And after creating the server, I will just, you know, um, um, set up, you know, some web systems and I would be able to host my web application through the server. So Katy was like, hey, that would have you talked about, you know, performance. And I was like, I mean, that's, that's really something I haven't really talked about. So I think that's a question that needs to be, you know, addressed. So it's more like in building an app, um, you, you just don't jump straight into, you know, because Azure has all services, you just don't jump straight into choosing anything but you have to ask yourself that what do i need to let my app perform better um Kati, can you confirm if you can see my screen yes yes we can okay so let me just switch directory and come in um, just a second okay so Kati, um whilst i'm trying to just log into uh, my personal account from here um so what have you actually learned between um, deploying platform as service application um, as opposed to deploying infrastructure as service applications? So um, choosing how to deploy your application is also a really huge part for your engineering team to figure out as we learn. So first of all, you have to think what amount of engineering power do we have? Do we have a dedicated DevOps team? Do we need a dedicated DevOps team for our application? And that's a really important question. So if you're starting out, you probably have just maybe two founding engineers. You do not want to spend time on DevOps. You do not want to spend time thinking about if your server is running or if you have to update your SSL certificate or if um, your server just went down and you need to scale by increasing more servers. You don't want to worry about that. So that's where platform as a service really can because you just deploy your application and it's automatically fully managed for you. Probably you can just scale by increasing the number of containers that are assigned to your application. So when your team begins to grow and you get more engineers and you can actually have a dedicated engineer for your DevOps processes at your company, then you can begin to go into infrastructure as a service at that time, your application is large enough to actually have a dedicated engineering team for DevOps. And also, it's going to really need that team to you know, focus and your other engineers can focus on their product. So that's how I would choose between one or the other, depending on the needs of the business. So three months or four months ago, when Dawood and I were working, the needs of the business were kind of pretty straightforward. We had just a very small engineering team and we needed to launch fast and we had no time to be checking on if the server is doing fine, what about the RAM, what about this and what about that. So we just went straight to using the platform as a service. And I think that was the best decision we could make at the time. So, yeah, so I think that's what I think. Um, yeah, so, you... Kat, I, I'm just thinking very quickly about, you know, um, actually deploying, um, aside deploying the back end and then the front end, um, when we were exploring, one of the things that we thought about was that it's really tedious to, you know, um, deploy a front-end application, but it looks like Azure has a service that makes it, you know, seamless um, for one to be able to, you know, quickly um, deploy whatever application they prefer. And I think that in particular you mentioned, um, which I told you I tried it out, was, um, you know, um, the, okay, so I'm just trying to log in. Okay, I think now I'll be in. Okay, so that is, you know, Azure Static App, uh, which allows you to just deploy your front-end applications within a click of buttons. Um, but one thing I think we thought more about was about the database, right? Um, how are we going to go about the database, right? And I think we then decided that why don't we just, you know, um, leverage on the best database out there within Azure, which is, you know, Azure Cosmos DB. Um, to be able to uh, fit into our needs. Um, I just want us to be very clear here to whoever is listening to us. What were some of the informed decisions that, you know, we considered before we took, you know, Azure Cosmos DB? 
Um, would you want to highlight that from your end? Um, yeah, sure. We talked um, extensively about it, but just to highlight the main points, number one that we needed was availability. We needed no, almost no downtime. It was very critical. You lose downtime, you lose customers, and business is not good. Secondly, we need scalability. If tomorrow we have a to handle it and kind of you know increase the size of the database or ramp or whatever we need we also wanted to make sure that the higher the traffic to the database the normal we need low latency throughout so that's also one of the things that we were looking out for thirdly we needed really really frequent database backups and we did not want to think about it so that's also one of the things that we took into consideration fourthly we also needed multi-region support for example, if a database is located in New York, then if that database goes down, that's or if there are users connecting from different parts of the world, we should be able to automatically replicate that database for different regions so that it's easier to fetch data for, for those users also. So all of these things coming together, we could obviously set up this infrastructure ourselves, or we could also you know, use a service that would give us some of this infrastructure and then set up the rest ourselves a possibility was just you know creating a database on an an or us uh, an ubuntu instance and then automating a backup script that would upload the backups to s3 but that's more engineering time that's a lot of things that you have to put in place so the obvious choice was to go with cosmos db compared to the amount of things that we needed and the cost that we were going to pay it was actually a, a no-brainer for us Awesome. Um, Kathy, just um, you mentioned about latency. Um, I think in exploring, you know, um, which region should we choose was a question that we all had to, you know, ask ourselves. Um, and depending on the region that you choose, uh, could actually affect, you know, the performance of your application. Um, just a quick one there. Um, I think we we found out about a link that could easily help one to um, be able to um, find, you know, the right region that should work for him um do you mind sharing that link in particular um yes now that you have your screen i think it would be great to just visit the link so everyone can partake it's Azure test. i'm just going to share it in the chat but you can also visit it um on your screen as a speed test absolutely all right so i'm just going to um go there um right into that and see what exactly we get so um if you do not know about this maybe you can check it up um, it was shared to me by one nvp so when we were exploring about you know which region should we choose to be the best for us i just told Katy that hey you know what there's this tool out there that helps you to be able to detect um which you know region would work best for you um depending on where your the users of your application you know are located right so yeah i think sorry for those were the informations double yeah. can you hear me yeah i i i absolutely yeah. can hear you great um, I'm, I'm sorry for the intrusion but um we have unfortunately <laughs> run out of time and uh, yeah we have another session coming up um uh, that also needs sign language as well um, exactly. yeah so it, it was a little bit unfortunate uh the internet connectivity is kind of a uh, joy breaker here yeah um, so uh, yeah can we can we just um, wrap up be in, be in contact yeah, so, after this one? Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, though it happens, we, we couldn't really share much of the things that we prepared behind the scene. I, I felt this were actually valuable information that um, helped us to make informed decisions uh, when it came to you know deploying the app that we were building behind the scene. Um, it's actually a company app, so we prefer to just uh, call it app and app. Um, but yeah, I think it was valuable time sharing um, and building stuff with Kati together. And um, this is what we, we had to, you know, um, share with you. Yeah. Um, Kati, any last word from you so that you pass it over to the um, next yeah. speaker? So just thank you guys very much for having us. My DMs are open. We can always talk more about, you know, if you want to deploy your applications to Azure or generally making any decisions about deploying your applications, you can chat, or talk, chat us up and we would love to share our knowledge. Thank you guys so much for having us. Yeah, you're really welcome, and uh, I hope to see you uh, again. Sure, sure, thank you. All right.